is the beginning of part two of the video about the feedback module. So here we have uh, where we stopped in the last video is that we, we have the feedback form here, but I want to convert this in a more uh, contact us type of form. Okay, so to do that, let's do right away a couple of things. Let's hide the comment section. So I'm going to go back to Firefox and I'm going to hide this. I'm, I don't want to delete. I want to keep it there. So I to hide, very simple, I can go to the settings of that module and I can just remove the permission to view that module for users, except, of course, administrators. So I'm going to update this. If I go back to Internet Explorer and I refresh this, as you can see, now I just have the feedback form. So let's do a couple of more tweaks here. And instead of feedback, I'm going to call this, I'm going to go to sets and call this contact us form. As form. I'm going to update this. Now I'm going to go back to Internet Explorer to give it a try. So uh, I will put my email address as a regular user. Let's say I was just browsing the web and I came across this form and I feel that I need to fill out this form. So I will just put my email, my name, any category. I want to talk to marketing, to sales. And I want to say that there's wrong price somewhere. And this is the message body. So I can just hit send feedback and even this text, we can, we can change this as well. So send feedback. Now, as you can see, I got the message that uh, the email was not uh, able to be sent, uh, was not sent just because I don't have an SNTP server in my local computer as I'm look as I'm running the site from my local computer, that's fine. If you have this online in a website, this will work fine if your SMTP information is set up properly. So I'm going to hit continue here. Now let's explore a little bit more on the back end of the module to see what are those other options under settings. So let's go back there. And if we go to feedback category settings, we have the option to make the category list visible or not. So we can we can uncheck this and if we click update, the category list will not be there anymore, even though we have configured with category, but it won't be there anymore. If we go back there to the settings and let's have a look at the form and field settings. We have a couple of layout options here. For instance, the label field can be in the same line as the field or above the field. So have, let's have a look. So right now it's in the same line. If we check the other one, the other option, we can have it above. We can also resize the width of the table. Let's say that I want to put the fixed width here of 500 pixels. Let's have a look and see how this is look like now. Oh, okay. So let's remove pixels and let's just hit update. Let's refresh the form and see how it's looking now. So right now the form has uh, shrinked and as you can see the, the labels are on top of the fields. So a couple of options that you can play around to adjust the look and feel of the form. So let's go back to settings and explore a little bit more. Forms and field settings. Now you have a, a, quite a few options here in terms of the fields that will show up in the form. You, we, we can select various different fields here. Most of them are by default hidden, but we can make them optional or required. Let's say that I want to make the name field uh, required. I can just select this box here. Now I want to ask for, just for the sake of testing, I want to make street, city, region, country, postal code, telephone. I want to show all of them. So I'm going to click update and let's have a look at how this big form now is looking like. So we have huge number of information that we are asking now. Now, of course, if you are doing a form and you really want people to fill it out, uh, you may want to ask as 
as little questions as possible because the more you ask, the more is are, are your chances of people not filling out the form. So let's go back to the options and go to settings. Again, we're just experimenting, so we're gonna play around with that. Now, a couple of other options here, email validation, there is a, co a complicated uh, regular expression here to validate, so you don't change that. Only if you know what you're doing, you, you play with those uh, fields here. Now, message roles, we can make the message box a little bit bigger, let's say 30 roles. And let's have a look at those other options here. So let's compress this. And I'm going to see what is under submission and security settings. We can uh, have a, a capture option. What is that? This is uh, those, those little images that you are asked to type in what the image says just to validate that you are not a spammer, that you are a real person. So right now it's disabled, but I can... I can ask that to be uh, filled out by all users. We can also avoid people to be resubmitting the form if required. And that can be by the user ID. So we only allow one submission or we can specify the number of uh, submission intervals that one per the same person can perform. We can check by IP address or by the email address. Right now, there's no filtering. Now, the last option here is once the form is submitted, we can redirect the user to another page and we can specify that right here in this dropdown. Last but not least, let's have a look at the moderation and feedback management settings. Now, this is not so much our case here because I'm, I, I don't want to be showing the, the, the feedback list, but if I did want to show, I can specify a print template, uh, print action. Again, I don't want really to explore uh, too much those those extra settings. Let's just hit update here and see how our form is look like. I think we have not changed much right now. So as you can see, now we do have the catcher here that the person has to type in to validate that this is a real person. And we really have expanded the message body. We have increased from 20 rows to 30 rows. Now, I just want to quickly show that in my uh, previous test, I have sent uh, some, some feedback and the feedback has uh, been displayed in the feedback comments area on my uh, page, but right now this is visible only to admins. You can make this visible to everybody or just to admins. So basically this is it. This is a quick overview of a feedback module by uh, .NET Tool. I mean, it's a, it's a free module and it's it's quite, quite an interesting module. You can do quite a lot. As you can see in the site here, we did a lot of uh, styling but this is the, just the feedback module with some styling applied to it. Not, not really a customization, but just styling. And so that's it. And thank you very much for watching and bye for now.